Hello everyone, this is Shamsi, and today we're going to be building what I call the Zamborak, given its black and yellow color, uh, which is an interplanetary mining ship. Um, it can haul an entire large container full of ore um, to and from Alioth and the Sanctuary Moon, and for reference, if you can take off and land from Alioth and the Sanctuary Moon, you can take off and land on any other celestial body in the game. The largest gravity to be found currently is here. So this is the ship I used to go to Madis and Thaddis to mine um, other resources. And I know that by strict definitions, this is not exactly what others would call a hauler, given that it can only... Um, uh, I don't know what its upper limit is, actually. I've only ever hauled up to 700 tons of cargo in this, um, but uh, the way I consider it is this. I only have the staying power to mine about a large container full. So that's about, um, you know, 100 and... Um, uh, or uh, about 1,500 litres of ore, I believe. And however heavy the ore is, this uh, ship is able to lift it up into orbit and land it safely on Alioth, where I have my factory. So this is the ship I use to go out and mine. Now, this is not a PvP-appropriate build. If you want to have a look at the solar system here, this blue ring, for as long as it's within the game, we cannot be attacked in PvP while inside this blue ring called the safe zone. At the same time, everything that we need in the game can be found here, inside the safe zone. Uh, yes, they're more difficult to find. Yes, they um, probably are in fewer quantities. But we don't need to leave the safe zone to mine. If we want to leave the safe zone, the way in it the game is in its current iteration, the meta is to warp. So later today, we'll be setting up our warp cell factory. Um, so the fact that I have the core exposed here, I have no honeycomb. These are not uh, PVP appropriate uh, decisions. Honeycomb means protection. We want several layers thick of probably iron when we try to make this PVP appropriate in another video. But Instead of trying to make this ship safe for PvP, I've decided to make this ship function only within the safe zone. And if I want to take this ship outside of the safe zone, I warp from safe zone to safe zone. Um, one moment. There we go. Yeah. So I warp from safe zone to safe zone. So I don't have any risk of being shot. Now, the other consideration for adding perhaps a little bit of armor to this is radar. I can slow boat it through space, completely safe, if I see the enemy coming. So when this is made into a PvP appropriate ship, I'm going to put radar on it. If I see someone burning towards me, I immediately hit my warp drive. So I can save the money of not using my warp cells to travel if I want to do that. I don't. I will always warp. But if I wanted to save money, I could have warp cells in my inventory ready to go and have the radar up and uh, warp if um, I see someone coming and slow boat it if I don't. Now, I think there is a minimum warp distance. And if somebody is um, ganking a planet, uh, you don't want to see someone coming within your minimum warp distance. So you're then stuck. You're heading straight to them. There's almost nothing you can do. We'll talk about some things you can do in the PvP version of this ship's video. But uh, if you want to, to slow boat it, I would slow boat only as far as your minimum warp distance. So um, you know, look up what that is. I don't know it off the top of my head. So... Let's get going. Uh, this is currently my declared container. We're going to be building from it. So let's set an empty container here as our linked container. Uh, 
and let's empty this one. My bad. I need to be on my linked container. And let's empty our fuel tanks. So I'm going to take this ship apart. We're going to rebuild it piece by piece. Um, now this ship, uh, so I watched a video by a YouTuber called Coffee Forever or the Dread Pirate Coffee Forever and his cube of super happy fun time PVP. Um, and my main takeaway from that video was you can make a ship. Oh, these are obstructed. I should have moved these further in. We can make a ship out of the components from which the ship is made. We don't need honeycomb. Honeycomb is weight. And in a safe zone PVP ship, uh, less weight is good. So, yes, this looks like it was freshly squeezed from a canine sphincter. It will not win any... I suppose it has a, a utility Soviet beauty to it. But it will not win any beauty pageants. But it gets the job done, and it gets it done very effectively. Um, I can haul any ore in the game I want inside that large container. The entire large container, minus, say, 5% that I reserve for extra fuel. You always want extra fuel. Uh, so um, let's get to it. Uh, so my main takeaway from that Coffee Forever video was uh, you can build a ship out of its components, and yeah, it looks bad, but from the back, which is the angle at which you normally see it, it looks like a spaceship. So uh, that's going to have to be good enough for us now. Let me just double check. I'm on my linked container. Um, I was not. So there we are. And uh, the way I take uh, modules off is by having the module key. So the element uh, key, which is number one. It's by default at number one. Hold down the Alt key and press to pick things back up. I don't know if there's a faster way of picking every element off of a ship. If there is, I haven't yet to find it. So I'm afraid we are just going to be clicking one by one on all of the elements and picking them up. I think that's it. And then we have our deploy ground element tool, which is by default number five. Hit Alt, click on the core, and we've picked up the core again. So this is going to be a small core vehicle. Uh, for the PVP version, I'm going to try and fit it all on an extra small, see if that works. If it does, great. If it doesn't, that's OK. Now, we don't particularly want it fully off the ground. We just want it off the ground enough to be able to work on its underside comfortably. That'll do. Uh, this is a Zamborak, which means B in Persian. Also a play on the fact that it's a big honking hauler rather than an elegant little bee. So how are we going to start our little story here? It starts with the container, which will be the core of the fuselage. As far as the controls that I'm using here are concerned, uh, I'll go over them in another video. Uh, we don't particularly need it to be in the middle vertically because we're going to move it anyway, but it is in the middle horizontally, and that's important. I'm not aiming for mathematical precision. Uh, this will do. And now that this is here, and I've started the build, I can uh, move the core out of the way nicely. Uh, where are you? Come on. There they go. Out of the way there. And then this, I'm going to move back a little bit. We want enough room for the engines to fit. Ah, this will do. So let's start with our engines. Uh, I'm going to start by placing my atmospheric engines in a 4x4 grid against this uh, container. So that's roughly the middle there. 
Yeah. That'll do. And I want this way. It certainly will make the wings clip easier if I put them this way. Slight, maybe it'll increase our cross section here. So if I go, uh, press tab to enter mouse mode, uh, go on the build helper here, the atmospheric flight engineer, this cross section here, frontal co cross section, we want to keep as low as possible. So I don't know what impact this will have, um, but let's go this way, why not? And there we go. Is that? Yeah, that's lined up. And then there we go. Whoops, there we go. Again, I'm holding down R and turning the mouse wheel to um, rotate the element. So holding down R, rotating the mouse wheel, and hitting R rotates it that way. If you ever can't get anything to rotate the way you want, try placing it and rotating it again from the maneuver element tool, which is number nine by default. And there we have our four atmospheric engines placed. Now, the reason I normally uh, do it the other way is so that I can fit the space engines there in the middle. So let me consider this for a moment. If I place the space engines now, they would need to snap to the side of the atmospheric engines here like this, which may increase our cross section a little more than we otherwise would have to. But I suppose it, it won't make much of a difference. So let's get the red side up. Hit the 9 key to make sure no engine is obstructing another engine. Select this item with the symmetry tool, which is number U, uh, the U key. Place the other engine and try to find the point of symmetry between them. The way I do that is by going forward one square and going all the way up or all the way down until I find the point of symmetry. And it'll glow yellow when I do find that point. OK, there it is. Uh, these are more or less in the middle. That'll do. So now we have our main engines placed. We're going to go for our stabilizers. Uh, the reason we're going for medium stabilizers over large ones, even though um, uh, we could fit large ones, not comfortably, but we could fit large stabilizers into this uh, dynamic core size, is very simple. We get more lift per weight from a medium stabilizer. And I don't know what impact diminishing returns will have on this, uh, but um, if we look here, we get a, a million newtons of lift for two tons of weight. And with a large stabilizer, we get four million newtons of lift for 11 and a half tons of weight. So I think for now, it's more efficient for us to put more medium wings up than large wings. So we're going to put one here. That is unobstructed. Yep. We're going to select it with a symmetry tool and put one on the other side. There it is. Put 
one on this engine here. That'll do. It's roughly in the middle. Now we could stack these immediately beneath one another, but that just looks so bad. And yeah, we could double down on this ship looking awful, but if you can make it look better in any place, you know, you might as well. Uh, this, where was the symmetry point? Near the back. There it is. And we can put another wing on the underside here. Selected with the symmetry tool. Now the reason we're going stabilizers over wings is because they are better for freighters. If you are very heavily laden, you want to be going uh, fairly flat until you reach your max speed and then making a steep turn upward. And the stabilizers have the lowest uh, stall angle. But just to help a little bit with the lift in the high atmosphere, we are going to put a just a couple of ailerons to get that extra little oof of lift up in the high atmosphere. There it is, symmetry point. Uh, we could fit another two uh, stabilizers here, uh, medium stabilizers, but I think this is enough. Was that down by one and that down by one? Let's make it look a little bit neater. Right. Now we're going to put our vertical stabilizers. Now these help adjust the direction of travel of the ship to match its orientation. So if you turn. Uh, your ship will just keep moving in the way you were moving before unless you have vertical stabilizers to exert force uh, to correct your course. So, uh, they look awful. Let's see if I can move them. Yeah, they look better there. Number nine, tool to move. There we go. So those are our stabilizers and ailerons. Uh, the next thing to place is our vertical booster. And for that, we're going to have to move our container down to the same height plane as the lower end of our engines. The reason we want to do that is we want all of our vertical boosters to be at the same level. Now, you have a choice between hover engines and vertical boosters. I've doubled down in my skill tree with vertical boosters. The reason being uh, they're more difficult to fly, sure, but you get more power from the boosters. And they work both in atmosphere and out in space. And sometimes you might want to go mine on a moon. And so you don't want to be limited to only being able to fly and work in atmosphere. So I went for vertical boosters. We're going to put six of them on because that is what's going to lift our fat uh, bellied ship off the ground when it's heavily laden with ore and get us moving under the sustenation of our wings. So right at the back, one. two. Now we're going to have two out to the sides here in the middle. Still have it look connected. 
Uh, these are lined up nicely. Yep. And there we go. And we're going to have two at the front. And we're going to use this basically as extra fuselage on our ship. So have that roughly in the middle. Is that about? Yeah, that's about right. It's one. Page up. And that's two. Right. Now we have our vertical boosters. Uh, we're going to add our atmospheric brakes. We're just going to, currently in the game, it doesn't matter where you stack these, so let's just slap them all here. That's two. That's four. Hmm. Does that actually affect cross section there? Yes, it does. Just a tiny little bit further down. There we go. Our frontal cross section there was not affected by the placement of those air brakes. More air brakes is good, especially if you are very heavy with ore. Uh, it'll help your ship stop in atmosphere much more easily. But I found four to be enough. Then we want our space brakes, retro rocket brakes. That's one. I should have placed these on the sides here. That's two. That's three. And I can put one in between some boosters here at the back. Does that impact the running of the boosters in any way? No. Should be fine. Right. The space brakes do need to be unobstructed in placement. Uh, then we have our adjusters. So we want up, down, left, right on the front and on the back. So this will do here. Make sure they don't obstruct one another. Then I select this with the symmetry tool so they can line up nice and neatly. until I find the point of symmetry. There it is. And then I'll use this as a guide for the other two to be symmetrically placed. There we go. That's up, down, left, right at the back. We want up, down, left, right at the front. We want 
this in the middle. Bring it out. Make it look connected to some degree. They're nicely lined up. So we have up, down, left, right, and the front. And we just want left, right, and the middle a bit as well. Uh, symmetry. It is important when it comes to adjust a placement. Right, now we're going to make a little cap for ourselves out of our fuel tanks. Uh, some may question the wisdom of having the pilot sit right between all of the fuel tanks. But if something happens and the safe zone goes away and we reach surprise PvP, I'd rather go quickly. So uh, let's go right here in the middle of our fuel tanks. We might have to move that. Uh, oh, we didn't place the booster there, which is good. Because now we can make ourselves a little cab here out of fuel tanks. Get it nice and straight, then use the fine movement tools up, down, left, right to lock it into its planes. And then move it. And there we go. Just make sure it's in the middle there. That will do. Right. The gyroscope. I really like having a gyroscope on my ships. Set it as a ship's orientation. And then the core can sit up front here with us. And finally, we want to be able to resurrect here if we die. And we activate that resurrection point. And there we have um, the build. So now let's fuel up the tanks. The reason why the tanks take more fuel than you might expect is because of skills I have that increase their volume when I'm the person placing them, the atmospheric tanks that is. Then we need to connect our fuel tanks to the elements that require fuel. So we're going to connect these engines. To this tank, these engines to this tank, vertical boosters all use space fuel, and obviously our space engines also use space fuel. So let's have a look at the cross section of our ship. Not terrible, not great. Uh, let's change our speed to kilometers per hour. We have a max speed of 1,418 kilometers per hour. Uh, that's really good. So if, obviously we're not gonna reach that, even uh, unladen, the tooltip isn't uh, correct there all the time. Uh, when we do uh, reach above about, 1050 kilometers per hour uh, we will start to burn up so we're going to have to use cruise control to control our speed so we have uh, you'll have about 10.5 mega newtons there uh, if you don't have uh, handling skills um, our brake force is very good our space lift isn't excellent we could do with another engine but that's okay it, it'll do and our space brake is uh, very nice 
low altitude lift 28 mega newtons from our um, vertical boosters is very nice it'll get us off the ground I'll show you how that works in just a moment but uh, before you fly any construct when you build it right click on the chair auto configure flying construct then right click again down in advanced change control scheme to what you prefer I prefer direct control but you can do you know WASD or virtual joystick I think just adds a little dead zone where mouse movement doesn't turn the ship so everything is set up let's uh, take it out for a spin in fact what I'll do is I'll go on a short flight to um, Alioth Market 17 because I want to go and pick up uh, in fact I will use my contacts here to I can't because it's offline the character right we'll just uh, navigate to Alioth Market 17 I'll show you how with a space capable ship you can travel you know hundreds of kilometers very quickly and then we can go through exiting and entering atmosphere press insert to uh, enter third person mode put your finger on control keep control press to engage your brakes scroll your mouse wheel all the way up to engage thrust on your engines press space to gain height with your vertical boosters let go of control once your engines have spooled up and you take off uh, I am speeding up very quickly as you see that red thing there unladen this ship really moves for its size it's surprising so let's increase the steepness of our angle here and slowly turn if I press X twice as you can see our vertical uh, stabilizers there are exerting force to turn our ship to move in the way in which we are now pointing and let's go up into space so we just tilt our nose up engines at full power and we are still speeding up even though we are at a steep angle and are almost out of the atmosphere so yes we're slowing down now but our space engines are about to kick in and we keep thrust at maximum so let's have the green arrow showing with our direction of travel so we want to head over here but we want to also be outside of the atmosphere which is I think around 5,000 5,200 ish meters on Alioth because we want to speed up to um, about 4,000 kilometers per hour and at 4,000 kilometers per hour even though this flight is really long it would take you know 15 minutes 20 minutes uh, traveling within the atmosphere uh, up here in space it's gonna go very quickly so let's cut our thrust which 4,000 will do so now if I move the ship any direction I want the direction of movement will still be in the last place in which we have thrust, which follows uh, this green arrow here. So I'm gaining altitude and I'm moving towards my target, which is exactly what I want. So now at around 60, I'm going to engage my engines again to maximum, but I'm going to also hold control for my space brakes to stop my ship in space, to stop the upward movement of my ship and there we go now I'm almost at a dead stop but I definitely don't want to enter Alioth at a dead stop so I'm gonna let my engines burn again uh, this time I'm gonna stop them at around two and a half thousand kilometers per hour in fact no I'm gonna stop them now so now I'm pumping my space brakes with my thrust at maximum to try and keep my speed under around 1100 kilometers per hour. So now when I've entered atmosphere at three and a half thousand meters, I have enough forward momentum to have my wings be able to lift me while my engines spool up. My large atmospheric engines are going to take eight seconds to spool up. 
and now even before my engines have engaged I'm under powered flight because I had enough forward trajectory movement for my wings to engage and because I don't want to continuously manage my speed I'm going to hit cruise control and maintain 1050 kilometers per hour and we're in atmospheric flight again so instead of flying for you know 20 minutes to get to this stage we flew for um, uh, yeah, whatever that was three four five minutes so get trajectory view and as you can see we are under powered flight here we and you know if you're entering atmosphere from a long space voyage it works exactly the same way you can do the thing where you come in backwards and then try to fly uh, forward again from that backward stop so your engines are under full power so you've come to a dead stop in atmosphere almost and then you tilt you um, and then you tilt the nose of your ship forward and then use your powered engines to fly uh, that's very difficult for me to pull off whereas this just pumping brakes keeping it around uh, make sure you come to a dead stop first so maybe a hundred kilometers per hour movement and then uh, burn forward with maximum thrust on your space engines while pumping the brakes and that gives me enough uh, forward momentum to be able to um, get to where I want to go right and then to land on a platform I reduce my thrust down to just above my sustenation speed and pump my brakes to control where I end kill my thrust slam on my brakes and I'm on the power of my vertical thrusters hold C control C and F are all selected and out we go and so you see the ship uh, very easily went off into space came back down now even with a full cargo uh, hold of ore or other heavy things um, it still works in exactly the same way the only issue is it's more sluggish so its engines will take longer to take effect so you really have to make sure you have enough forward momentum um, uh, before you uh, enter atmosphere in Alioth and then the other thing is your uh, air brakes will be much more uh, sluggish in response so you could either add more air brakes or you know be careful with your entry so I've got my finger on control I've pulled my engines up to maximum they've spooled up I let go of control let go of space and my wings are lifting me up so off we go back into the high atmosphere uh, oops we don't want whenever you see that uh, red um, fire around your ship hit your brakes which is control we're about to see it again here and we're in space so get our space engines fired up increase our height we do not want to enter the atmosphere again while traveling at you know 4,000 kilometers per hour we will instantly start to explode so I'm gonna tilt my nose up a bit just to gain height a little faster at around 5,000 meters we can it really is already better than sky citizens and it it really is uh, so now that we're above 5,000 uh, meters, we no longer need to worry about the atmospheric uh, resistance against our ship. So we speed up to our uh, cruising speed, as it were. And we'll stop thrust at 4,000 kilometers per hour. There we go. Scroll your mouse wheel down. Now, as you can see, my direction of travel is still up and forward so we'll keep that going okay <laughs> I'm glad it it does it does feel great I 
I just logged into this game a couple of weeks ago to say I want to grab some space before all the good places go. And that was two and a half weeks ago. I have no idea what's happened to my life in the meantime. It's just sucked me in soul first. If you're about to buy it, I'd suggest going to um, Marquee Dragon Game Codes and then put in the coupon code discount at checkout to get another 60 cents or so off. I don't get anything for saying that, by the way. It's just how I buy my codes. So I'm at a dead stop. Now my engines are burning at maximum thrust to speed me up as I fall. I'm getting uh, forward trajectory movement. And I need to start pumping my space brakes now. That's absolutely fine. I understand that completely. Uh, best of luck with the, with the account. Although he is a, a, a business partner with them, so it's, it's a trusted third party, but uh, that is something that I agree with completely as well. Um, so, right, my speed is maintained at just about 11-ish hundred. And even before my atmospheric engines kick in, I'm under powered flight. So I have no risk of belly flopping, uh, belly first into the atmosphere. Now this entire process of entering atmosphere is much more difficult when you are fully uh, laden. So as you see, I made a bit of a mistake there. I slowed down too much, too fast, in too little uh, altitude left but because I was empty my engines were very easily able to get forward thrust going when you are full your engines are much slower space engines are much slower in getting forward thrust remember we only have 7.3 or something mega newtons of thrust uh, from our space engines so I would have most likely plummeted face you know, belly first into the ground there and cried on stream and tried to get there as quickly as I could with some scrap to reclaim my ship. If you blow up a ship, um, whoever repairs the core then owns it, so you need to get to it fast. I once blew this ship up um, on uh, Madis and respawned back here on Alioth and had to get a shuttle out there quickly to, to go and repair it. I did get it back there, which was, which was good. So we start pumping our brakes to slow our direction of movement and we kill our thrust slam on our brakes and our vertical engines have us fine tune where we want to go re-engage our engines make sure we are moving forward not forward into the side into our factory press space to gain height with our vertical boosters Engage our air brakes, cut our engines, uh, move forward just a little bit more, and I'm here back at my little makeshift landing pad. So, there you go. This is the Zambarak, the interplanetary mining ship. Its capacity is, you know, five, six, seven hundred tons, which is about all you can fit into a large container anyway. And a large container is all I have the staying power to mine for anyway when I go to another planet. Um, so if you want to, to go to another planet, all you do is get yourself one of these, a territory scanner, or I've got two more being made there. Uh, three is good, but then you're carrying a lot of weight. They weigh about 60 tons each. You would put it into your cargo hold because if you crash and it explodes, they take a lot of scrap to repair. So I generally just try to keep mine in my cargo hold. Um, press M. Let's say I want chromite, so I'm going to Thaddis. I'm going into the heart of the scar. when it likes to load. Yeah, I'm landing, say, somewhere out of the way, say there or there, and I engage my territory scanner. In 15 minutes, it gives me all the ore that is in this little hexagon. And if there's enough chromite here, I start drilling down into it, 
and uh, mining uh, for ore. So, uh, what else do we have on the docket for today? Uh, but you can scan three zones at the same time. Yeah. So with the other two uh, territory scanners I'm making right now, what you can do is land your ship uh, in the intersection of three hexes, so exactly there in the middle. And then uh, let me just uh, set this as my linked container again, take my fuel back out and my scrap. And then I'll show you how that uh, placement would work. So suppose you have three territory scanners. You would enter build mode, start the territory scanner somewhere on the ship, hold T, drag it out to the far corner, and remember, anything can be placed completely floating up in the air. It doesn't need to be connected to anything else. We'll put one on this corner, one on this corner, and say one on this corner, while making sure they are all uh, in different tiles. And then you would go up to it, press F, activate, start scanning. And after a while, it'll give you results uh, like this. It'll tell you it's got, you know, so many kilo, kiloliters of bauxite and you know whatever and the capacity of this ship is i think one and a, 150 kiloliters so 150,000 liters is how much a large container can hold if i have well i obviously have a lot more spare fuel than this but um if you have spare atmospheric spare fuel spare tier three scrap scrap always try to have tier three scrap on you because you will eventually blow up your ship from time to time it's just bound to happen i can leave the territory scanner in there for now and uh pick it up when you're done so this is the interplanetary mining ship i do hope that you've enjoyed this video if you want to see more like it please consider subscribing on youtube along with hitting the the bell icon to receive notifications and also following me on Twitch. I am streaming this game three or four days a week. Until the next time, bye for now.